morning, everyone, and welcome to Close Up. I'm Josh McKelvin. Come November, many Republicans say they are convinced that health care reform will be the undoing for many incumbent Democrats that are up for re-election. Time will tell if that assessment is accurate. But we are joined by First District Congresswoman Carol Shea Porter to talk about health care, her re-election bid, and as time permits, everything else in between. Congresswoman, thanks very much. Nice to have you on the program. Thank you. Good to be here. Two and a half weeks now, uh, roughly, uh, since the uh, health care legislation passed. Uh, and you've been out there talking to the people in your district. Uh, what are you hearing? How's the pitch going? Well, it's very divided. I mean, it's like the rest of the country. And I've been saying to people, this is a swing district. And what a swing means is that pretty much 50% one way or 50% another way on any given issue. But what we're hearing after we get the facts out, and I have asked people at times to vote individually on provisions in the health care package, and they were favorable to the separate provisions, and then I tell them that's actually what's in the bill. But, you know, there's a lot of misinformation, and I also respect the fact that there are some people, even when they have the information, wish that that vote hadn't passed. But as I pointed out, I campaigned on health care twice, and won twice, and I have to believe based on the letters and the phone calls and all of the response that we've had, that there is a uh, large, large percentage of majority that understood I was working for health care and support that. Uh, you, you talk about the misinformation. Uh, what, uh, what are you hearing most from the critics, from the people? I mean, what are they getting wrong about this uh, in, in, in the largest degree? Many things. I mean, it started in August with the death panels. We all know that. There were no death panels. But it was a good launch for those who did not want this health care legislation to pass. And since then, some of them are as simple as members of Congress exempted themselves. And that's simply not true. Members of Congress, if they choose to purchase health insurance through their job, will be in that exchange or that they'll be forced to be in the exchange and that's not true either or that their insurance company will drop them or their employer will drop them and the reality is their employer could drop them tomorrow you know, if they wanted to and that many employers have been forced to drop insurance for their employees because they can't afford it so the other part is they don't believe it's paid for that's probably the hardest part to explain to them that it actually is paid for that the Congressional Budget Office ran the numbers repeatedly. It and you're convinced. Obviously Republicans are saying this yes, thing is going to bankrupt the entire country while Democrats are I saying am. this is paid for, but you're, you're convinced. And you know, it's interesting lives. because the head of the CBO came out and said that this was paid for, that these numbers worked, and then he just came out and said in a separate issue that the debt is not sustainable. And I know that everybody will agree with him on the fact that the debt is not sustainable, including me. That's why I voted for a debt reduction commission or signed on to co-sponsor a bill for a debt reduction commission. And so he's telling the truth. He's telling the truth about the numbers. He's also telling the truth on the, on the general issue. And people are concerned about the debt, and they should be. But this is not going to drive up the debt. Let's talk about, uh, you brought up employers a moment ago. The New Hampshire ski industry has expressed a lot of concern yes. about this, uh, to say that it's going to affect their bottom line. When you looked at this bill, did you recognize this as a potential problem before you voted for it? Well, no. We Initially, we had more days allowed for part-time employees in the House bill, and then that was changed. You know, we had a House bill, a Senate bill, and then had to come together and, and create a... a uh, bill that would pass both houses and have the reconciliation. So we're looking at that and we have spoken to leadership about this and we will we will work on that. But how big of a point of a contention was that for you when you when the, it did change for the seasonal workers and the part-time workers? Well, see, here's what I tell people. I said, you know, for a hundred years they've been trying to get health insurance. Presidents on both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats, have called for a health care program so that we would have healthy Americans and productive Americans. And so if you look at the, the total bill, it's a good bill. Now, the problem is, like anything else, it'll have to be tweaked. And this is one of the issues that will have to be tweaked. But the point was to get the train out of the station. And then as we move forward, you know, we'll be able to, to tweak it so that people like the ski industry employees will we'll have some relief there. So we'll be working on all this, but the important point was so that... there were some flaws. I mean, there were some it. flaws going well, into this. As you said, always, the train out of the station, uh, always, did you kind of have to swallow hard at one point and say, all right, these are things that are going to have to be fixed as we get closer to 2014 when the bulk, sure. bulk of the legislation, but I'm going to sure. pass it just to get it going. That's right. That's exactly it. And I quote my dad who used to say that you know that you've hit the compromise when nobody's happy. And so, you know, this was a, a compromise in so many ways, but, but the essence of the legislation is good. It will control the costs. It will 
now finally allow people with pre-existing conditions to have insurance. It'll make it more affordable for small businesses. They will be able to buy across state lines if the states form a compact to do that. They'll be able to go into what we call the exchange or marketplace and pool together so they can get a, a rate like a big business gets. Sure. You know, children up to the age of 26 will be able to stay on their insurance policy. And we hope that this will unleash the spirit of entrepreneurship where a lot of people have a good idea for business, but they're tethered to a job because of the health insurance. Okay. Congresswoman, you've also been uh, having a few town hall meetings of late yes. here in New Hampshire. How different are they now than they were last summer? Obviously, there were some raucous crowds that had some very real concerns, expressing some fear. But what you're hearing now, how real is that fear rather than manufactured by people who are just opposed to this bill because it's a democratic back then. Oh, it's real. I mean, people worry. Anytime there's some kind of major change, especially armed with the misinformation, then they're going to worry about it. And, and the other part is they want to know how will this affect them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's our job to say if you have insurance and your employer covers you, it's not going to change. But if you don't have insurance or you're a small business or you have to shop for insurance on your own, you're going to receive some help. You will have to carry insurance, but, but if you're a family earning, a family of four earning under $88,000 a year, you will get help. If you're a senior citizen, you'll now have free preventive care and we're going to close the donut hole for the prescriptions. We're also going to offer 50% discount on the major brand drugs starting next year, which is a big help to seniors. So once they hear it, then, then they start to understand that it's a consumer-friendly bill. But that doesn't sure. mean that everybody is going to want this. 